the best way to test if your vehicle's spring brakes come on automatically. A. Continue to step on and off the brake pedal until the parking brake valve pops out on tractor-trailer vehicles. B. Continue to step on and off the brake pedal until the manufacturer's low PSI specification has been met for the spring brakes to deploy. C. Continue to step on and off the brake pedal until the parking brake valve pops out on single vehicles. D. All of the above. The answer? D. All of the above. Which of the following factors can cause brakes to fail or fade? A. Excessive use of the service brakes. B. Not relying on engine braking enough. C. Brakes being out of adjustment. D. All of the above. The answer? D. All of the above. When should you drain your air tanks? A, at the end of the month. B, at the end of the fiscal quarter. C, at the end of each working day. D, at the end of a trip. The answer, C, at the end of each working day. Which of the following should you do before leaving your vehicle unattended? A. Chalk the wheels. B. Put on the parking brakes. C. Remove the keys. D. All of the above. The answer? D. All of the above. How would you check your truck's slack adjusters? A. Accelerate, then brake hard. B. Use gloves and pull hard on each slack adjuster you can reach. C. Press the brake pedal while listening for any strange noises. D. All of the above. The answer? B. Use gloves and pull hard on each slack adjuster you can reach. Which of the following is true about your brake function if your ABS fails? A. You will have no brake function and your truck will be out of control. B. You will still have normal brake function and simply need to get your ABS repaired soon. C. It may cause problems with other mechanical systems and there could be a huge fire risk. D. It will slow your truck to a halt and force you to pull over. The answer? B. You will still have normal brake function and simply need to get the ABS repaired soon. Slack adjusters are A. Between the power screw and push rod on disc brakes. B. Part of your air brake system used to adjust the brakes. C. Between the push rod and S cam on drum brakes. D. All of the above. The answer? D. All of the above. How do brakes work on a long, steep downgrade? A. Not applicable. There is no braking effect involved in a downgrade. B. As the main braking mechanism. C as the main braking mechanism with the engine braking effect as the emergency backup, D, as a supplement to the braking effect of your engine. The answer, D, as a supplement to the braking effect of your engine. Spring brakes are A, made up of powerful springs that are held in back while you are driving by air pressure. B, brakes that come on automatically on a truck or tractor with when the PSI drops too low. C, not going to have full effect until your PSI drops to a certain range, often 20 to 30 PSI. D, all of the above. The answer, D, 
all of the above. If the brakes are wet, what can be done to dry them out? A. Use the brakes to slow down from a high speed. B. Drain the air storage tanks. C. They must be serviced by a mechanic. D. Use the brakes lightly while driving in a low gear. The answer? D. Use the brakes lightly while driving in a low gear. What should you never do when the spring brakes are on? A. Check the air in the air tanks. B. Use the modulating valve. C. Press the gas pedal down. D. Push the brake pedal down. The answer? D. Push the brake pedal down. Most heavy duty vehicles have a dual air brake system. What is a dual air brake system? A. Two air brake systems with separate sets of controls. B. Two air brake systems that share the same set of air tanks. C. A primary air brake system for everyday use and a secondary air brake system only for emergencies. D. Two separate air brake systems that use a single set of brake controls. The answer two separate air brake systems that use a single set of brake controls. Before driving a vehicle with a dual air system, the driver must allow what to happen? A, there are no special circumstances for a dual air brake system. B, the air compressor to build up a minimum of at least 100 PSI in the primary system. C, the air compressor to build up a minimum of at least 60 PSI in both the primary and secondary systems. D, the air compressor to build up a minimum of at least 100 PSI in both the primary and secondary systems. The answer, D. The air compressor to build up a minimum of at least 100 PSI in both the primary and secondary systems. Which of the following is true about a dual air brake system? A. One is called the primary system and one is called the secondary system. B. One system usually operates the front axle and one operates the rear axle. C, they use a single set of brake controls. D, all of the above. The answer, D, all of the above. What is the correct way to slow a large vehicle down on long downgrades? A, using a low gear and driving more slowly. B, using exhaust braking. C, holding the brakes down firmly. D, controlled braking. The answer, A, using a low gear and driving more slowly. Pressing on the brakes as hard as you can, releasing when they lock up, then pressing the brakes fully again when the wheels are rolling is called what? A, anti-lock braking. B. Stab braking. C. Impact braking. D. Controlled braking. The answer, B. Stab braking. In a dual air brake system, which parts of the braking does each system typically operate? A. One system operates the brakes on the rear axle, the other operates the regular brakes on the front axle and trailer. B, one system operates the brakes on the rear axle and the trailer. The other operates the regular brakes on the front axle. C, one system operates the brakes on the front and rear axles. The other operates the brakes on the trailer. D, one system operates the brakes on the rear axle 
The other operates the regular brakes on the front axle. Both supply air to the trailer. The answer, D. One system operates the brakes on the rear axle. The other operates the regular brakes on the front axle. Both supply air to the trailer. With the air brakes, there is an added delay when stopping. What causes this? A, the time required for the air brake system to measure the correct amount of pressure to send to each wheel. B, the time required for the compressed air to engage the push rod. C, the time required for compressed air to build up enough pressure to engage the brakes. D, the time required for the air to flow through the lines to the brakes. The answer, D, the time required for the air to flow through the lines to the brakes. Where is compressed air stored? A, air compressor. B, presser gauge. C, main reservoirs. D, service and emergency airlines. The answer, C, main reservoirs. To test the air leakage rate, one must turn off the engine with a fully charged air system, turn the key to the on position, release the service brake, and do what? A, Measure the PSI as the air pressure gauge falls from its original amount. B. Time how long it takes for the air compressor governor to cut in. C. Measure the amount of pressure in the system, then come back in 30 minutes and measure the pressure again. D. Time the air pressure drop. The answer? D. Time the air pressure drop. Chemical changes in the braking line, which reduce friction and cause expansion on the brake drums, is known as what? A. Brake fade. B. Green fade. C. Surface scorch. D. Brake overheating. The answer? A. Brake fade. Which of the following is a reason that air tanks must be drained? A. Your left side brakes will cease to operate. B. You will drive too quickly if they are not. C. Your brakes may fail due to water freezing. D. Your transmission fluid may drain out. The answer? C. Your brakes may fail due to water freezing. Why is it especially important to have your brakes adjusted before going down steep grades? A. Some brakes will do more work than others. B. It is not any more important than any other time. C. It can cause your slack adjusters to fail. D. It will cause more of a strain on the air compressor. The answer? A. Some brakes will do more work than others. In what instances should you not use the parking brakes when parking? A. When the emergency brake is turned on. B. If the brakes are very hot or very wet in freezing temperatures. C. If you are on level ground. D. Always use the parking brakes when parking. The answer? B. If the brakes are very hot or very wet in freezing temperatures. If parking brakes are not being used when the vehicle is parked, what must be done instead? A. Use wheel chocks. B. Parking brakes must always be used. C. Use the emergency brakes. D. Leave the vehicle in gear when parked. The answer? A. Use wheel chocks.
which device allows you to remove oil and water from the air brake systems? A. Air tank drain. B. Safety valve. C. Alcohol evaporator. D. Treadle valve. The answer? A. Air tank drain. What does it mean when the safety valve opens and releases air? A. The pressure has exceeded 150 psi. B. The system is fully charged. C. Something is wrong. A mechanic needs to check it. D. The pressure has exceeded 150 psi and something is wrong. A mechanic needs to check it. The answer? D. The pressure has exceeded 150 psi and something is wrong. A mechanic needs to check it. If you press and release the brake pedal rapidly, what will happen? A. You can let the air out faster than the compressor can replace it. B. Your vehicle will stop faster and straighter. C. You can safely control your speed around a curve. D. You can cool your brakes rapidly. The answer? A. You can let the air out faster than the compressor can replace it. Which device helps reduce the risk of ice in the air brake systems during cold weather? A. Air compressor governor. B. Air tank drain. C. Safety valve. D. Alcohol evaporator. The answer? D. Alcohol evaporator. What is a modulating control valve? A. A device that controls when the air compressor will pump air into the air storage tanks. B. A device that cuts the normal air pressure to the front brakes by half. C. A valve used to drain oil and water from the air storage tanks. D. A lever used to apply the spring brakes gradually. The answer? D. A lever used to apply the spring brakes gradually.